We need to infuse compassion, empathy, and unity back into our WSU community. And that healing process needs to begin immediately. WSU Athletic Director Pat Chun says it's time to move on after yesterday's high profile termination of head football coach Nick Rolovich. Good afternoon everyone. Thank you for joining us on Crempton News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. We're glad you're here. I'm Whitney Ward. So the fallout continues today after that controversial move, but university leaders say they stand by their decision after Rolovich as well as four other assistant coaches refused to get vaccinated against COVID-19 and that's despite the governor's mandate for all state employees. So now we turn to who takes Rolovich's place. Sports director Brenna Green joins us now as she got to speak with the new uh, interim head coach Jake Dickert today. Brenna? Yeah, Dickert today hammered it home time and again. His main concern right now is for his players and supporting them through this difficult time. Obviously, a lot of them upset with yesterday's decision to fire Rolovich and they are still working through that grieving process. Dickert said today that there is no sense of relief around this team for that decision. He called on fans in particular to support his players through this time and especially on Saturday. I think this is a great day for perspective. You know, I hope everyone can stay, uh, take a step back and look at the big picture and focus on the people that are greatly changed uh, by yesterday, and that's our student athletes. I'm a firm believer that adversity is life's greatest teacher. And that's what I praise to our guys and I preach to our guys. And I think this is going to be another challenge for our guys to continue to learn and grow. Um, but just out there, Washington State faithful, you know, I, I know sometimes people are mad, but if you're mad, I hope you're so mad you're willing to help and support our, our players. Okay, and if you think today is a day for celebration, I hope you're willing to show up on Saturday and celebrate for our guys. And let's come together because I believe they deserve this. Dickert also noted today that it'll be a mixture of internal and external candidates who will fill the remaining four assistant coaching positions. He's hoping to have all of those coaches in place by the BYU game on Saturday. Tonight at 5, we'll hear from Dickert on what his message was to his team yesterday and today, including a cool antidote from practice. Back to you. Mm. Certainly going to be interesting. Brenna, one of the things that actually caught our eye yesterday, we talked about that tweet uh, that Dickert had. It's his pinned tweet there at the top. It's the picture of him getting his yeah. second shot, I think. We talked about that a little bit, um, and he th that isn't what we were going to talk about. If we can bring up that picture, it shows the tweet, and it also talks about him thinking that this was kind of a, a bigger moment than just, yeah, you know, an individual moment. There it is right here. Mm -hmm. um, talking about this, you know, his second shot was complete. What do you make of that, Brenna, and this tweet? It, it almost has a sense of foreshadowing in some ways. Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, today I asked him about that tweet. He said that he got vaccinated because he wanted to help his players any way he could, and that meant that he needed to get vaccinated so that other fans could get vaccinated to get inside of Martin Stadium. He wanted to have fans in the stands, and at that point he just didn't know. So that getting vaccinated for him was him supporting his players and showing them that he was going to do whatever it took in order to get fans fans back in the stands cheering on that team. So Brent, a couple of questions may or may not know the answer to. Mm -hmm. uh, do we know if he actually did get uh, uh, the exemption and then was not able to be accommodated? And on the other and the other question is, do we know if he had a chance to address his team before he left? Yeah, so the first part, the first question there, uh, there are employee privacy rules, so therefore nobody can really go on the record right now and say whether or not his exemption got approved or denied. That, that makes a lot of sense. Um, secondly, we're kind of unsure right now if he was given the option or not to speak to his team before we left. We do know that he immediately left and did not speak to them, but uh, Chun was asked to kind of clarify that today because he said uh, yesterday that he was not that Chun or that Rolovich immediately left after he got the news and he, he didn't really seem to clarify that that much. So we're still unsure if he was given that option or not. A lot of questions remain, yeah. Brenna. Thank you very much. And we know this is a lot of information to take in. So for more on kind of the timeline of mm -hmm. Nick Rolovich's ultimate firing and next steps for WSU, we have a whole section devoted to this on our website. You can also just text the word ROLO to 509-448-2000 and we'll send you a link to our web article with even more things on all things WSU mm -hmm. football.